New Testament prophecies are not looking into the future. Amen? New Testament prophecies, uh, they, bring, they bring exhortation, comfort, and what else? Edification. Edification. Boy, y'all some smart students. Amen. So, first of all, we want to look at this. It says, beware, and prophets are, is anybody that is speaking the word of God. So what it's saying here is beware of false people who speak the word of God. You with me? They're false. In other words, oh, you can't minister the word of God in authority, in anointing, and power without it all being about God. If it's anything to do with you, God's out of it. It has to always be 100% about God. Everybody okay? Stay with me. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Disguise. I believe Jesus refers to his people as his sheep. Amen? So now what he is saying is beware of false people that minister the word of God and they come to you dressed like, acting like Christians. Do you agree? That's what the word is saying to us tonight. He says... Um, that they come in sheep's clothing. Now, I, I couldn't help, as the Lord spoke to me, clothing is something on the outside. Amen? That means that's something you can take off and on as you desire. You can't take on Christ off and on as you desire. He either is or he isn't. You can't put him on on Sunday morning. And take him off on Saturday night. Mm -mm. Can't do it. See, now, now preacher, are, are, are you trying to tell me something? Yes, I am. Because when Jesus comes back, or if your life should end in the shape that you're in, everything you've done, that's it. You don't get any more overs. You don't get to redo anything. If everything you've done in the ministry has been to glorify you, to get you a position, to get you in front of people, if it's all been about, or if any of it has been about you, it, it all is going to be washed to naught because we stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ and it's going to be burned up real quick. But if you have ministered with nothing but God in your heart and not your opinions but the Word of God, and I'm amazed at people today who want to call themselves ministers and know nothing about the Word of God. They just want to get up in front of people. They want to lead people. We're having a mad rush of this in, in, in biker churches now. To where people see the success of this church and they go out and start a biker church and they don't even know how to untie three scriptures in the Bible. And they make false claims about themselves which is absolutely untrue and they try to deceive people because it's all about them. Stay with me. Is everybody okay? We... Even in the music industry, my, my brothers and sisters in the pearl band, they know this. And if you know anything about gospel music, gospel music is riddled with false people. People that couldn't make it in the rock and roll world, they decided they'd come down and play in the gospel world. 
And they get up there on the stage and they praise the Lord, but yet when the stage, when they leave the stage, they get just as drunk, they mess around with just as many whores, they do just everything all the other rock and roll stars do. Everybody okay? Beware of these false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Clothing is something you can put on. Now watch this. But inwardly, how many of you know what's on the inside? will eventually come out on the outside. But inwardly, they are raving wolves. Now, when the Lord was speaking to me about this, I, inquiring minds like mine got to ask God all kinds of questions. And I wanted to know, Father, why is it that you call them raving wolves? Why didn't you say wolves? Everybody know what wolves are. And I found out that raving means to devour. The definition means to, to be on a prowl for prey. It means to plunder, to famish, to be vicious. It means to be eager for prey. And I can't help but notice that these raving wolves always prey on the weak. Now, this might be an awakening to you because if you discover that you've got raving wolves preying on you, maybe it's because you're weak. In the natural, wolves will look at a pack of sheep and they'll pick out the young one. They'll pick out the weak one. They'll pick out the sickly one. And when they attack, they separate the sheep. Is everybody okay? Stay with me now. It says, but inwardly, they are raving wolves. Then verse 16. This is a revelation that the Lord gave me right here. Stay with me. You shall know them by their fruits. Once again, the Lord said, people of today are judging fruits by what they've been taught in denominations and religions and Christian television. I'm about to show you something. That's all wrong. And the proof is in the following scriptures. Because we have seen individuals get up and preach and preach a mighty word. And people get saved. I've seen people with natural gifts because God says that his gifts and talents that he gives us, they don't, they, he don't call them, uh, he doesn't repent from giving them to you. He doesn't call them back. So any natural gift, that you have in the flesh is yours. God will not take that back from you. Some of you have gifts of playing musical instruments or being singers. Some of you have gifts of being leaders. Some of you have gifts of being money managers. Some of you have other, all kind of gifts that you have. God will not call that back. You can use that gift to your glory all you want to. God will not take it back. But you will not get a reward for that gift. And you are responsible for the gift that God gave you. God's going to ask you one day when you stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. What did you do with the gifts that I gave you? So it says you will know them by their fruits. So first of all, the body of Christ of today is so used to judging ministers by their gifts and we're calling it fruit that is not what jesus is saying well man they sung so good it just brought the whole house to tears that is some fruit no it's not that is gifts you with me Well, he got up and prophesied and prophesied to people and people were set free. And he got up and he cast devils out of somebody. The fruit is there. That is not fruit. That is ministerial gifts. 
You're growing up with me tonight, aren't you? Does the Bible not say that God will bless His Word? Doesn't matter who says it. The devil can speak the Word of God. God will bless His Word. Has nothing to do with the individual that speaks it. God going to bless His Word. So, what we have done is, we, we have let this modern age church deceive our minds. And this has been an ongoing trick of the evil one so that we can't recognize the truth. And now we're living in a Christian age, a Christian society, where we think we're judging people by their fruit. And it's not their fruit, it's their gifts. And we should be judging them by their fruit. I'm going to get to that. Y'all okay? Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're going to get deep. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. So you know now, never judge anybody. If, if you want to know whether they're of God, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're going to know it. Well, let me repeat that. If you want to know whether they're a raving wolf or not, you can't judge it by their gifts, whether it's a natural gift or a spiritual gift. Yes, a raving wolf can have spiritual gifts. But watch this. You got to judge them by their fruit. Well, Pastor, you just blew everything right out of the water. How am I going to judge them by their fruit? Watch this. Verse um, 20. I find this so interesting that the Lord repeats himself. There's a reason why the Lord repeats himself. Because he wants to make sure we get it. He says in verse 20, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not by their gifts. Not by their natural gifts. Not by their spiritual gifts. But by their fruit. I know you say, come on pastor, tell me about the fruit. Here it comes. Verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, he's making a very important statement. Just because you operate in ministerial gifts don't make you a Christian. Just because you put on the coat of a Christian, because you put on the coat of a sheep, don't make you a sheep. Not everyone that, that, that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now watch this. Qualification number one. But he that doeth the will, the will of his, of his Father. All right. This is going to sound elementary, but this is where people have missed it over and over again. Watch this. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, that he that doeth the will of my... Not your will. Not the Baptist will. Not the Presbyterian will. Not the Pentecostal will. Not, not Christian TV will. But the will of Jesus' Father, which is God Almighty. But we have strayed away from the Word of God to get into entertainment. And now we're so wrapped up in chills and thrills and somebody shaking us and somebody jerking. And we're so interested in all this other fluff that we've gotten away from the Word of God. We've got to get back to this. Because Jesus is coming for people who are back to this. Not into the fluff. Not into the bacon shake. Okay. Everybody okay? 